welcome to my channel today we are going to discuss about uh, the objective type coaching from the topic uh, directional coupler and power divider from unit 4 so already uh, i posted the 14 videos in the mcq pattern for the subject antenna and microwave engineering so if you want to learn means i will give uh, the link for those videos in the description box you can see okay so we will see the question uh, first question you see the power dividers and couplers or dash microwave components used for power division or power combining so the power divider and coupler okay the directional coupler or dash microwave components uh, used for power division or power combining it's a passive microwave component active microwave component linear non linear so the power divider and the couplers are the passive microwave components used for power division and power combining okay passive devices so the active microwave uh, uh, devices are uh, we will see in the next uh, video uh, that is a uh, 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 gun diode and uh, magnetron clustron these are all the active microwave components so the next one the directional coupler produces uh, division of power amplification generation of power reduction of power the directional coupler produces the division of power directional coupler it is used to used for the power division okay used to uh, divide the power into the particular ports the next one the directional coupler is reciprocal device non reciprocal device amplifier oscillator so the uh, directional coupler it's a reciprocal device okay the next one the directivity of the directional coupler is always expressed in dash that is the unit of directivity directivity it's a one of the important um, parameter of directional coupler so the directivity of directional coupler is always expressed in Uh, neighbors decibel watts without unit so decibels directivity is usually expressed in decibels okay db then in the next one in a directional coupler what is the thing one is the isolation in db equals coupling plus directivity coupling equals isolation plus directivity directivity equals isolation plus coupling isolation equals product of coupling and directivity so in a directional coupler the isolation in db the isolation in db equals the coupling plus directivity if you are adding the coupling uh, plus directivity we will get the isolation value okay then the next one where is the resistive load placed in a directional coupler so where we have to place the resistive load in a directional coupler front end of the primary front end of the secondary back end of primary back end of secondary back end of secondary the resistive load is placed in a directional coupler in where means the back end of the secondary okay the next one the coupling factor the coupling factor of directional coupler must be maximum and it is a key factor that determines the performance of the coupler similar to directivity the coupling factor it is also a important performance uh, measure factor for the directional coupler so here they are saying it as the coupling factor of directional coupler must be maximum and it is a key factor that determines the performance of the coupler yes it's a true only so the coupling factor so what is mean by the coupling factor means the coupling factor indicates the fraction of input power that is coupled to the output port okay so how much amount of power uh, from the input input power how much amount of input power is coupled to the output port is mentioned by the coupling factor so uh, this coupling factor it is uh, important in order to measure the performance of the directional coupler so for a directional coupler if the coupling factor is high means the maximum power is transferred to the particular output port without loss okay that is the meaning of the coupling factor so coupling factor is a, a one of the key factor that determines the performance of the coupler okay it's a true only then the next one the directivity of directional coupler signifies 
the direction of power flow in a coupler that is uh, the directivity the directivity of directional coupler it is mentioning the direction of power flow in a coupler it's a true or false it's a false directivity is not mentioning oh, in which direction the power flow is that okay that is not mentioning the directivity directivity is nothing but it's a measure of directional coupler's ability to isolate the forward and backward waves okay so how the waves are propagating from the input port to output port so that thing is measured by the directivity so the directivity it is also defined as it's a ratio of power at the output port to the power at the isolated port so how much power is propagated to the output port and uh, without a uh, reflection okay so that is mentioning as a directivity so directivity it is not mentioning the direction of power flow so the, so the statement is false then the next question isolation of directional coupler is a measure of dash isolation power delivered to the uncoupled port power delivered to the coupled port power delivered to the second port none of the mention the isolation of directional coupler is a measure of power delivered to the uncoupled port so how much power uh, delivered to the uncoupled port is mentioned by the factor isolation okay so isolation coupling factor directivity these are all the three important uh, performance measures of directional coupler okay directivity is a one of the measure isolation is a one of the measure another one is the coupling factor it is also the uh, performance uh, fact uh, the key factor in order to uh, analyze the performance of the directional couplers okay then the next one insertion loss is the power delivered to the through port it's a true or false insertion loss is nothing but the power delivered to the through port so what is through port means in a directional coupler the second port is called as through port and the third port is called as output port you know the directional coupler the first port is a input port and uh, the second port is a through port second port it is mentioning as a through port the third port is called as a output port okay so when the power flows from port 1 to output port the power measured at port 2 it can be mentioned as a insertion loss so when we are uh, uh, transmitting power from port 1 to output port so how much power Uh, uh, that is some amount of power is uh, reflected in the port 2 so that power is mentioned as a insertion loss so insertion loss is the power delivered to the through port it's a true only okay uh, then the next one in a symmetric coupler the power delivered to the through port and the output port or equal it's a true or false it's a true only so in a symmetric coupler the power delivered to through port that is port 2 and power delivered to the output port both are equal okay then the next one a t junction power divider can be used only for division of power is a true or false the t junction power divider can be used only for uh, the division of power it's a false okay so the t junction power divider it's a three port network that can be used either for power dividing as well as power combining so the t junction uh, it is used for power division as well as the power combining operation also okay so if you are using for power division means so one of the port is excited that is we have to give input in one port and that input power is splitted into uh, uh, two thing and one is uh, transferred to port 2 and another one is remaining power is sent to the port 3 so if it is a power combining means two ports are excited we have to give the inputs in two port and the two values are added and it is uh, coming from uh, via the third port okay so the t junction it is used for both power combining as well as power division so the statement is false okay it is used only for power division it's a false it can be it can also used for the power combining also the next one the lossless t junction divider can be modeled as a junction of three transmission line it's a true or false it's a true so a lossless t 
T junction. So T junction means already know the T junction. It consists of three ports. Okay. So we can model the, this T junction divider using the three transmission line. Okay. So it's a true only. Then the next question for the realization of a lossless T junction power divider using transmission line, the characteristics impedance of the transmission line has to be real. It's a true. Okay. So in order to realize a, a lossless T junction power divider using transmission line, the characteristics impedance of that transmission line must be real value. Okay. So yes. Okay. It's a true only. Then the next one, the output power measured at the two ports of the T junction is a constant. It's a variable. It's not a real power. None of the mention. The output power measured at the two port of T junction, it's a variable. It's not equal. Okay. The, the output power measured at the two output port of the T junction, it's a variable only. Uh, then the next one, the hybrid couplers are also a type of directional coupler. It's a true or false? It's a true. Okay, the hybrid coupler, it is a one of the one type of directional coupler. The hybrid couplers are also a type of directional coupler that give a coupling factor of 3 dB. Okay. So the coupling factor of 3 dB means, uh, 3 decibel means the 70.7 percentage of the total input power is received at the output port. So that type of coupler, we are calling it as a hybrid coupler. So high, one type of directional coupler, it's a hybrid coupler. Okay. The next one, the T junction is an example for two port network, three port network, four port network, none of the mentioned. T junction is an example for three port network. Okay, so three a T junction, it's example for three port network. One port uh, is an excitation. If you're applying uh, input in one port means uh, that uh, input value is divided into two things and uh, we will get the two output. Okay, if you are giving input in two port means that the two value is added and we will get the output in another one port. So T junction is a three port network. The next one, a T junction has three cross three S matrix. It's a true or false. It's a true. Okay, T junction, it's a th three port network. Okay, so already you know, for N port network, the S matrix, uh, the size is N cross N. Similarly, the three port network means uh, the S matrix size is also three cross three. So it's a true. The next one, if your device is passive and contains no anisotropic elements, then the device is dash network. Okay, it's a reciprocal network. If the device is passive and contains no anisotropic element, mean that a device is a reciprocal network. Okay, the next one, a lossy T junction can be matched at all three ports. A lossy T junction can be matched at all three ports. It's a true or false. It's a true only. If a T junction is constructed using resistor, the T junction becomes lossy, okay? Uh, but uh, it can be simultaneously matched at all three ports. The next one, the diagonal elements of the S matrix of a resistive T junction or dash. So for one resistive T junction, the diagonal elements of the S matrix, it is zero. Okay, so you know, if the T junction is having all values of resistive component means it is a lossy T junction. So for lossy T junction, it's a, all three ports are matched. So that's why the diagonal value S11, S22, S33 value is zero. The diagonal elements is zero. Okay, then the next one, the power delivered to the input port of resistive power divider is equal to the source voltage applied. It's a true or false, it's a false. The power is applied to the resistive power divider there is a loss, okay. Uh, hence, uh, not all supply power is uh, delivered to the particular port, okay. So that's why this is the false statement. The next one, the power input at port one of the resistive T junction is equally divided among the two output port of T junction. It's a true or false, it's a false, okay. The power division, if you are applying uh, the input in one port means you know, in T junction, there are two output port. So output, if you are measuring output power in port two and port three means that the two thing is not at all equal, okay. The power division ratio 
of the resistive T junction. It depends on the resistance uh, connected in those junctions. So that's why the power uh, uh, divided in that two output port, it is not equal. Then the next one, a major disadvantage of lossless T junction power divider is dash. What is the major disadvantage of lossless T junction power divider? Not matched at all ports, low power output, complex construction, none of the mentioned. So not uh, the major disadvantage of lossless T junction power divider is not all ports are matched, okay? So the T junction, if all ports are matched condition means that is a lossy T junction. Uh, uh, that is the, so in lossless T junction, all not all ports are matched. Two ports are matched condition. One port is not at all in matched condition. So that is the disadvantage of lossless T junction power divider. Okay, then the next one, the Wilkinson power divider is a dash. It's a two port network, three port network, four port network, none of the mention. The Wilkinson power divider, it's a three port network. Okay, it is used as a divider. It has one input port and two output ports. And if it is used as a coupler, it has two input port and one output port. Okay, so this power divider, it may be used as a power division or combining. If it is used as a power divider means one input port, two output port. If it is used as a power combining means uh, two input port, one output port. Then the next one, the Wilkinson power divider is an equal split power divider. It's a true or false, it's a false. The Wilkinson power divider can be used to divide power in any ratio. So we can split. So in one output port, we will get 10 percentage of the power. In another one, we will get 90 percentage of the power. Okay, so based on the ratio, we can divide. So this power divider, it's not an equal split. So the statement is false. Okay, the next one, if the 10 watt uh, is applied to the input port of the standard Wilkinson divider, then the sum of power measured at the two output port of the Wilkinson coupler is dash. So for Wilkinson divider, we are applying 10 watt power. Okay, standard Wilkinson divider. Then what is the output power uh, of this Wilkinson coupler? Okay. So you see for a standard Wilkinson coupler, the output power is 3 dB less than the total input power in dB. Okay, so that's why, uh, so in decibel 3 dB means uh, in terms of uh, uh, percentage, there is a 70.7 percentage of the total input power. So that's why 70.7 percentage of the input power is 10. So 70.7 into uh, 10 divided by 100 means, so what is the answer? We will get 7.07 .07 watts, okay? This is the answer. Then the next one, the analysis of Wilkinson coupler is done using dash. So in order to analyze uh, this Wilkinson coupler, there are so many analysis, even and odd mode analysis, symmetry, S-matrix approach, none of the mention. The even odd mode analysis is a, one of the simplest method of analysis for Wilkinson coupler. Okay, even odd mode analysis in order to analyze the Wilkinson directional coupler. Okay, then a Wilkinson coupler designed can be operated at any frequency. So the statement is false. So the Wilkinson coupler is designed, it can be operated at any frequency. Okay, so no. The length of the branches of Wilkinson coupler is all wavelength dependent. Okay, so that's why if you are designing one coupler means it can be operated at one frequency, not uh, another frequency. Okay, then the next one for an equal split Wilkinson power divider. Okay, equal split Wilkinson power divider of 50 ohm system impedance the characteristics impedance of quarter wave transmission line is dash. The, if the characteristics impedance is Z ohms uh, of the system means, uh, then the value is given by square root, root two into EZ. Okay, uh, that is the characteristics impedance of one system is having the impedances EZ ohm means the characteristics impedance is square root two into EZ. So here, the system impedance is 50 ohms. 
So that's why the characteristic impedance of the 50 ohm system is 50 into root 2. So 50 into root 2, we will get the 70.7 ohms. Okay, so this is the answer. So you see, the characteristic impedance of the Z ohm system is given by the formula root 2 into Z. So root 2 into here, the Z value is 50. So if you are multiplying, we will get the answer as a 70.7. .7. Okay. So these are all the some of the questions about uh, the directional coupler and power divider. Okay. So in this video, so we discussed uh, uh, what is directional coupler, what are the uh, performance measures of directional coupler. Okay. And uh, the next one, the power divider, the T-junction power divider. Okay. What is lossy T-junction power divider? What is lossless T-junction power divider? And uh, what are all the things uh, we discussed? So in the next video, so we will uh, see the next thing, the E plane T, H plane T and magic T. Okay. So thanks for watching my channel and uh, please subscribe my channel for more videos and uh, please share this video to your friends also. We will meet in the next video. Thank you.